how to redirect. One can say they wanted to introduce formal education in Africa, and as a result, they came and they did it. Three, there was human suffering in Africa that they saw as something which was evil, which was not good to up to, to human beings, that was about slavery, and they had also an intention of coming such that they could put it to an end. And indeed, when they came, we shall be understanding in their achievements, one of them says that they preached against slavery, which made it to reduce, and finally it ended. We, didn't have, we don't have to say that they ended it because to end slavery, we looked at the treaties which were signed to end slavery in Africa. So, next one says that they also wanted to pave a way. They wanted to pave a way, sometimes people say to soften the hearts of the Africans such that their colonialists or colonialists would come and have now what we call colonization taking place in the African continent. So, these are some of the reasons that we can first of all share on why the Christian missionaries, these are the ones that we have discussed, why they came to Africa. <clears throat> the other issue is, we are going to look at the societies that sent these missionaries. Now what we shall realize is that we are going to have missionaries in different groups, we have those that were sent to East Africa. This one majorly talked about this. There are those that were sent to Central Africa. There are those that were sent to South Africa and West Africa. So we are going to be looking at these groups or these societies that sent these missionaries. One in East Africa, we have what we call the Church Missionary Society that we have abbreviated as CMS. This one was sending the group of the missionaries who belonged to that sect that we call Anglicans. This is also what some people call Protestants. I prefer we use Anglicans. Two, they, they, we had the White Fathers. We have said this one was for the Catholics. Then we have the London Missionary Society, LMS, for the Anglicans. We have the Holy Ghost Fathers. This one was sending the Catholics. Then we have the ones that were sent to Central Africa. The ones sent to Central Africa, one, we are having the university's mission to Central Africa, UMCA, and we are saying this one sent the Anglicans. Then we have the London Missionary, again coming here, the White Fathers, the Church Missionary of Scotland. Then coming to South Africa, we are having a summary of, we have the London Missionary Society, that is for the Anglicans, the Paris and Evangelical Missionary Society, then we have the Mariano Hill Missionary Society. Then coming to, we go to West Africa, we are having the Church Missionary Society, once again, the Holy Ghost Fathers, the Society of the Propagation of the Gospel. So those are the societies that sent different missionaries to different parts of Africa. In our next move, we are meant to understand who were these missionaries. We may not be able to discuss or to finish all of them right now, but we are going to pick out the major, major names, the major missionaries who came to Africa with their contributions. Then our lesson will be flowing. So, so our first missionary, we are having Johann Ludwig Kraft. We cannot complete this lesson without mentioning this. And we shall be saying, this gentleman or built, there are a lot of words we can use, we can also use established. He built or he established the first mission station. That is at Rabbi Mpia. So sometimes they can be asking you, if they don't write the name, then they can ask you for the contribution.
then you will be the one to put that missionary. They can ask you which missionary built the first station in East Africa, that is in Kenya. So you shall be able to find that, I mean, to get the answer as Rabbi, I mean, <coughs> Johann Ridgecrop, that is the first, I mean, really the first mission station in East Africa. Let's also have Dr. David Livingstone. Dr. David Livingstone. So for Dr. David Livingstone, they always ask us a question, apart from being a missionary, what else was the work of Dr. David Livingstone? We have already answered that question by reading it you will find that he was also a doctor who could treat people. So we are having Dr. David Livingstone preaching Christianity, that is the word of God, to Central Africa, South Africa, and we have also said he could also treat the people from some diseases that they could, that they could get. Then the other one is Alexander McKen. Alexander McKen. So this is not something new to us. If we were asked, why do we remember Alexander McKen? So one, we say this was a leader, first of all he was the leader of the church missionary society into Uganda. He was a leader of the church missionary society into Uganda. Two, he introduced what he called the first printing press. He introduced the first printing press into Uganda. That is where we are. We are going to have another question. How important was the printing press that he introduced? We shall be having answers like pray, printing prayer books. First printing press which was used for printing prayer books. For printing like Bibles, then we have hymn books. So in other words, we are having these items which were used for spreading or by the missionaries to spread the word of God. Prayer books, the hymn books, then we have the Bibles. That is Alexander Mackay. Then the other name that we are going to talk about is Father Simon Lowdell Father Simon Lowdell this is the name the one who was nicknamed as Mapera Father Simon Lowdell who was later on nicknamed as Mapera. So this, this gentleman, one, we shall be saying he was the father, he was the leader. Father Simon Loden was the leader of the White Fathers. He was the leader of the White Fathers. Remember we say these White Fathers belonged to the group of the Catholics that sometimes we know we call Roman Catholics. So this was about Father Simon Lodell that we have, we have said he was later on, or he was nicknamed Mapera by some Ugandans who could not pronounce well what he was meaning. Then the other one, 
We also have what we call up, the one who was called Apollo, Shivabulaya. Now, Apollo Chidabulaya, this one we are having him preaching Christianity towards the western part of Uganda. He preached Christianity towards the western parts or in the western parts of Uganda. And also entered beyond Uganda to some parts of Congo. So we are going to add, to add here DR Congo. So that is their contribution of Sir, I mean, Apology the Bulaya. He preached Christianity in the western parts of Uganda and also entered some eastern parts of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The other next one we are going to mention, we have a name called Robert Ashe. Robert Ashe. Robert Asher, that we say he was the first, I mean he was the missionary who introduced the first bicycle to Uganda. So we are having Robert Asher introducing the first bicycle to Uganda. Then we can add Dr. Albert Cook. We don't have to forget that. Dr. Albert Cook. Now, when I talk of Dr. Albert Cook, something should be coming to your mind. And what comes to your mind, if there is any other thing apart from building the first hospital in Uganda, then that is wrong. So we are having this one, building the first, we shall say, he built the first hospital in Uganda. That is to say, Mengo Hospital. So in case a question is coming asking us which was the first hospital to be built or to be established by the British missionaries in Uganda, we have got the answer, that is, that was Mengo Hospital. Then lastly, on this example, on these missionaries, hmm, we can add Sir Kenneth Bora, Sir Kenneth Bora, whom we can say he was he introduced the first he introduced the first. There is something we need to understand here. This is the first we are looking at, not the one with F I. So we are looking at fast meaning these cotton seeds that could mature very fast or within the shortest time they are ready for harvesting. So it's the fast growing cotton seeds to Uganda. So in this lesson we are able to answer a number of questions that can be coming to us asking in the other way. So if the question is asking who introduced the first growing cotton seeds to Uganda, we are having already the answer, and that is Sir Kenneth Bora. Then, this is now the last on the list. We can talk about Bishop Alfred Tucker. Now, when we talk of Bishop Alfred Tucker, we shall go back to what we call the Imperial British East Africa Company, whereby we say that when it ran bankrupt, that is lacking funds, as it was planning to withdraw its services, Bishop Alfred Tucker requested for more funds from the Church Missionary Society to continue keeping the IBECO running in East Africa. So we are having Bishop Alfred Tucker mobilizing, or we can use the word requested. He requested for more funds, requested for more funds from the Church 
missionary society to keep IBECO running in East Africa. We have said the contribution that was played or that was contributed or put by Bishop Anthony Tucker was to request for, the, for more funds from the Church Missionary Society. I have abbreviated it. When, for you when you are writing, make sure you open it. I have said Church Missionary Society to keep the company that is IBECO running in East Africa. Now we shall be able to answer another question from here. Why did Bishop Alfred Tucker request for more funds from, from the Church Missionary Society? So we shall be able to get the answer that the Church Missionary Society was, was the one that had sent the Anglican missionaries to East Africa. The Anglican missionaries. So, the, as the IPECO was playing another role of protecting the missionaries with their activities, then it meant that that the missionaries had to help also the company such that it could continue running and as a result protecting the missionaries as they do their work or as they preach or spread Christianity in East Africa. So those are some of the, some of the missionaries that we can talk about. Then we are going to look at also the challenges, the problems that these missionaries faced and after the challenges, we shall be looking at the achievements that they play, I mean that they did, the contributions. Let's first begin with the challenges. We can call them problems. Faced by the missionaries. while in Africa. Problems faced by the missionaries in Africa is our next subheading that we are going to be discussing about. So, when we talk of the problems, if we are able to remember some of the problems that the European explorers faced while in Africa, then we shall be able to bring some of them also to this, since they were also the foreigners. We have problems like one, difficulty in communicating with the locals, that is what brings what we call language barrier. Language barrier, meaning they faced a problem of a difficulty or they had a difficulty in communicating. It simply means that the British did not know the languages that the Africans were speaking. So as a result, it gave a problem. Two, we had some leaders who were a little hostile or harsh, hostile leaders. This brings all, we can address it as hostile tribes, meaning we had some communities in Africa that were not friendly to these visitors. So for them, when they could meet them, they could give them some hard time and that one became a problem. Then three, these missionaries also suffered from tropical diseases. They suffered from tropical diseases. Now this, again, what takes us back to what we say that very many of these whites could die in Africa due to these tropical diseases and as a result, for them, they considered Africa as a graveyard of the white man. So that, is, that was a very serious problem that these missionaries encountered. Then four, the fourth problem was they had a problem in crossing some physical features. Difficulty in crossing in crossing some physical features. When we talk of some physical features, we look at physical features like lakes, rivers, we have mountains, 
and the other physical features that give them hard time as in crossing. So you will find that, for example, if they, if they wanted to pass via an area, but there is a lake there. So at the end of it all, you will find they will not go straight, but to look for other ways of crossing. Remember, some of these physical features are impassable. For example, we have some rivers with waterfalls that hinder water transport. So they had another challenge there. Then the other problem that these missionaries faced, we can add on the, the fears while the animals that we had in Africa, dangerous wild animals, we can address it like that. Dangerous wild animals. Here we cannot mention, we can't fail mentioning the lions. So these problems here gave these missionaries hard time when they were having their work in Africa. Like I said, we are going to look at the problems that they encountered or that they faced. After looking at these problems, we shall be able to also discuss which good things did they do while in Africa. So those are the ones we are going to discuss as, the, as their contributions. Contributions or achievements of missionaries. In this subheading, we are going to look at which good things, much as they also, we shall also blame them, but we also have this, we first talk about the good things that they did in Africa. One of them, we cannot forget spreading, so we shall say the missionaries spread Christianity in Africa. By them introducing that religion, spreading it to the people, it was a contribution. Meaning, in, before them, we did not have Christianity. But we had Islam because the Arabs had stayed in East Africa. So remember that. Two, when we go back to look at missionaries like, like uh, Dr. Albert Cook, we said he built the first hospital. Which means that the missionaries also, we can't put it as a contribution, they built hospitals. Built hospitals in Uganda, let's not specify. In Africa, they built hospitals. Missionaries built schools. The missionaries constructed or built roads. Missionaries built roads. So this was to ease transportation or ease their movement to other places such that they could reach there. So we have talked about constructing roads, building schools, building hospitals, spreading Christianity. The other one we said missionaries preached against slavery. They helped to preach against slavery and it reduced. This was an achievement. Missionaries preached against the slave trade and it, it reduced, meaning they looked at it as something which was evil to mankind and finally they had, I mean, it reduced. Then, hmm, we can also talk of introducing, introduced new crops, missionaries introduced new crops. For example, we already talked about the first growing cotton seeds introduced by Sir Kenneth Bora. Then also we can talk of the introduction of the printing press. They introduced the printing press which was used for printing prayer books. This conference say missionaries introduced, we would be very specific Missionaries such as Alexander Mackay introduced the first printing press, first printing press, which was used for.
for making items of worship. So, for now, that is where we can end on the missionaries. Remember, we would also talk about the negative side of the missionaries, where we shall be talking about missionaries leading to what we call um, the killing of the Africans, and that one takes us to what we call the martyrs. So we shall also be able to note, as much as we are ending here, also make it in your mind that these very missionaries led to separation of people and also brought the killing of the people in Africa in the name of the Uganda matters. Thank you so much for sharing with me that knowledge. We shall end there. We'll meet again next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.